So to finish up the series, I want to show you how to submit your Apple Watch app within your iOS app to the App Store. So as you can see, Apple has released this website detailing all the things that you need to go through to uh, submit your Apple Watch app. It isn't a particularly tricky process, but there is some little cav cavits that you need to check before you can um, go through it. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do here in your project inspector is check that the build numbers on both your iOS app, your Apple Watch extension, and your Apple Watch app are all the same. As you can see, they're all, they all should be about build one. Once you've made sure they're all the same, you also need to set your team on each of these. And generally, the Apple Watch app one won't be set. If you've set up things like app groups before, you'll have, you'll have your team set on the extension and the regular iOS app, but you won't have it on this Apple Watch app. That's the one you need to check. The next thing that needs to be covered is the icons, both for the iOS app and the Apple Watch app. As you can see, just to save some time, I've already set the icons on both of these, but I'm going to go through them anyways. So the first set of icons is, of course, your regular iOS set of icons, uh, with the size being, with the two resolutions at the certain sizes. As you can see there's a whole range of them for the iOS app. Now there's plenty of information on creating iOS app icons. Um, simple rule is that this size for that one is twice that number and they're all squares. So I'm not going to go too deeply into this but the one thing I do need to address is the Apple Watch icon set sizes. So as you can see there's sort of two versions of the sizes. There's these millimeter sizes and these times resolution sizes like on a regular iPhone app. These millimeter sizes are the sizes of actual icons on the Apple Watch because there's two Apple Watch sizes. There's 38 millimeters and there's 20 and there's 42 millimeters. Of course these different sizes have different resolutions so you need two icons. So while it says that there's a point value for each of these, it's actually double the size in pixels because the double the size in pixels. The actual sizes of the images you want to be making are here on the Apple Developer site, and I'll put a link in the annotations. Sizes in pixels that you can put into Photoshop or any other photo program that you're using to make these, make and resize these images. So the other three icons here are on your iPhone. They're not on the Apple Watch. And because of that, you use them, you create them using the same sort of rule of timesing the number of pixels by the resolution. Of course, those sizes for those icons are down here as well. So everything within our app is ready. We have our icon sets, we have our actual app, and we have all our build settings done. Oh, and as you can see, now, if you actually look after we set these icons here in the interface builder, you can see that our dynamic inter uh, notification interfaces have our little icon in there. So now that we've done this, we've set up our icons, we've set up our project, we can actually get it ready to submit to the App Store. To do that, we need to create an archive, validate that in Xcode, and then submit that to iTunes Connect. If you've built and submit iOS apps before, this is the same as usual. And if you haven't, I'm just going to go through it. If you, if you already know all these steps, you can just skip this bit. I'll put a link in the annotation. So the first thing we need to do is select our regular iOS app target and change our device to our iOS device. Up here in product, we need to go archive. And that runs creating an archive of our app, a container or a thing that's ready to submit to iTunes Connect. So that's done, we get this manager screen. Next thing we need to do is to validate this archive. Select your iTunes Connect account. As you can see, it comes up with all our frameworks because we're using Swift, it has a lot of the Swift frameworks. And as you can see, we come up with an error. That's because we haven't created our app, we haven't created our app in iTunes Connect. If you haven't used iTunes Connect before, it's part of your developer script subscription and it's what you use to put your app on the App Store and manage your App Store page. So over here in iTunes Connect at iTunesConnect.apple.com you press and then you press apps. 
we're going to go up to the plus button. New iOS app. Watch uh, 2 just as an example name. I'm going to choose my language. This is 1.0 and the SKU can be whatever you want it to be. It's just a way that um, you identify your app if you're doing like accounting, if you're selling an app or you're having ads or something on it. So I'm just going to call this Watch Kit 2. The final thing we need to do, choose a bundle identifier. So if you've used permissions within your app, so if you've used a capability that needs an app ID, so for example, an app group like we did in one of the other tutorials, this will already have created a this would already have created a bundle identifier for your app in iTunes Connect. If you haven't used one of those capabilities, you can click this link and you just go to this page, um, fill in the details with an identifier, which of course you would have used here, and then you can continue reload iTunes Connect. But I do have an identifier. Now I can just click create. And here is my iTunes Connect app page, Apple Store app page, ready to submit our app. So now back in Xcode, we can try validating our project again. So finally, we have this big success icon, and now we're ready to actually submit our app into iTunes Connect. So we press the Submit button, choose our iTunes account again, and submit it. This will take a while depending on how good your internet is and usually it does take a while. So finally after a few minutes it comes up with um, submission successful and and if we look in iTunes Connect sure enough in our pre-release there's build number one of our app and all the information it has it's currently just processing it but once that's done so the final thing we need to note here in iTunes Connect is this menu here Apple Watch lets you upload your special Apple Watch icon which as it explains in the on this page should be somewhat different from your uh, regular iOS icon to handle the smaller screen. Um, it also lets you upload five screenshots. You need to upload at least one screenshot. Yeah, here you have your regular icon and up here you have your regular screenshots. So I guess the final thing I need to show you is how to take these screenshots. Once we have our app running in Xcode, we just need to go file, save screenshot, and that saves our screenshot onto the desktop. Here's our Apple Watch screenshot. Here's the iOS app screenshot. It takes both of those. And once we have that, we just need to drag it over to iTunes Connect, drop it in there. And after a second, it will upload. And then we have our Apple Watch screenshots. Do the same with some iOS screenshots, some more Apple Watch screenshots. And after you set your pricing in um, Xcode, just save that. Once you've set your pricing, this is the thing that traps a lot of people. You need to choose a price tier before you can submit your watch to the App Store. Give that a second. Once that's done, you're ready to submit it to the App Store and have your app on the store ready for when ready for when Apple Watch is released on the 24th.